pray in Ephesians 2, verse 1 through 10. And, um, and you were dead in, in your trans, trespasses and sin, in which you formerly walk according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, which is the devil, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. Among them, we too are all formerly live in the lusts of our flesh, indulging the desires of the flesh and of the mind, were by nature's children of wrath, even as the rest. But God, being rich in his mercy because of his great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our transgressions, made us alive together with Christ by grace, which we have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the ages to come he might show the surpassing riches of his grace and kindness toward us in Christ Jesus. For by grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, for it is a gift of God, not as a result of works, so that no one may boast. For we were his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus for good works, which God prepared for be prepared beforehand so that we would walk in them. And Ephesians 2, 11-22. Therefore, remember that you formerly, you, that formerly you, the Gentiles in, in the flesh, who are called uncircumcised, uncircumcision by the so-called circumcision, which is performed in the flesh by human hands. Remember that you were at that time separated from Christ, excluded from the commonwealth of Israel, and strangers to the covenant of the promise, having no hope without God in the world. But now in Christ Jesus, you who formerly were far off, have been brought near by the blood of Christ. For we for he himself is the peace, is our peace, who made both groups into one, broke down the barrier of the dividing wall by abolishing in his flesh the enmity, which is a law of commandments contained in ordinance, so that he himself might make the two into one into one new man, thus establishing peace, and might reconcile them both in one body in God through the cross, by its having put to death the enmity. And he came and preached peace to you who were far away, and peace to those who were near. For through him we are both our access in the one spirit to the Father. So that so when you are no longer strangers or aliens, but you are fellow citizens with the saints and are of God's household, having been built on the foundation of the apostles and prophets, Christ Jesus himself being the cornerstone, in whom the whole building being fitted together is growing into the holy temple in the Lord, in whom you are also being built together into a dwelling of God in the Spirit. We are God's workmanship. He is building us together. He put us here for a reason. God loves us so much. He's willing to die for us. We need to put God through God first in all things. And remember, the devil prowls around like a roaring lion. If, if you don't have Christ in your life, the devil will come in and tell you lies. Tell you that you're not worth anything. Or tell you that if you do this or that, you will become prosperous. If you believe these horoscope people or these psychic people or the, the, the lottery, if you do certain stuff like that, it will make you happy. 
But the only thing that really makes you happy in this life is having a relationship with the creator of the universe. And we can only do that through the blood and death of the Son of Jesus Christ. We need to put our faith daily in Him. And only through Him that we can have a truly prosperous and happy life. I'm not going to say it's going to be easy. It's not easy to put our faith in God. But we need to do that daily. It's all about Him. And don't believe in psychics and don't believe that in reincarnation because it's all a bunch of lies. Lies from the pit of hell. We need to put our faith in Jesus Christ. And only Him can we be truly happy. It's all about Jesus. And keep looking up. Christ is coming back soon. And just have to look at, the, at our world. And keep praying for our president. That people will pray for him. That God will change him. Open his eyes to the truth. You know, I didn't vote for him, but I can pray for him. And you can pray for him. And um, pray that he will, he will know the truth. And the truth will set him free. And keep looking up. Keep trusting God. Keep loving him. Keep praying. And um, God is good. Thank you so much.